Many of you like me will start using Addictive Drums 2 in Studio One by going to the Browse panel on the right hand side over here, clicking on Instruments, and then if you've got it sorted by vendor like I have, you would go down to the XLN Audio folder, expand that, and then simply drag Addictive Drums 2 out into your project. Now after a moment or two, the interface is going to appear, and there's several things you might do at this stage. You may audition some drum kits like so, or you may go to the kit section, start swapping out some individual drums, etc. Now importantly, at this point, if we open up the mix panel by clicking on the mix button on the bottom right here, we will see that one channel has been created and all of the sounds from addictive drums are coming through that channel, that stereo channel. Okay, so I'll just play some drums now. And you can see that they're all coming through that one channel. That's important, and we'll get back to that later. But essentially, at this stage, this is a great start for composing your drum parts for your song. Now, for me personally, I would go ahead now and start recording my drums um, and make a custom drum track for the song. However, you can also use some of the pre-existing beats in Addictive Drums too. Now I'm gonna do that now for the sake of simplicity so that we've got something to work with right away. So I'm gonna go over to beats here. I'll select, doesn't matter which drum beat I select here. Let's just go for dry beat 01. I could audition that here. That sounds fine. I'm just going to grab that from Addictive Drums 2. I'm just going to drag it out onto that track in Studio One. Okay, so we've got the MIDI data for those drums there already. Now I'm just going to double click on that and that's going to automatically open up that in the edit view at the bottom here. Let's just move this interface out of the way so we can see that. This is great. We can see the drums that which have been used in this drum beat. We can click on them here. Yeah. And that's all well and good. Now, if you don't happen to see a display like this, okay, which is a drum map kind of display, um, perhaps you're seeing this kind of view, yeah, which is a piano roll view, then just click on this icon here, yeah, just the drum icon here, and you'll get this kind of display. Now, further from this, what I like to use is a drum map, which is associated with Addictive Drums 2. It's really easy to switch to another drum map. I'm going to go up here, just click on this area up here, and I've got a few drum maps installed at the moment. I'm just going to go to Addictive Drums 2 here. Now, I like this one because it's color-coded. Now, if you're not actually seeing this drum map, if you haven't got that installed, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that later, okay? But this is what I like to do at this stage. Furthermore, if I just click on this little icon here, I can then click on hide unused, just to hide any of the drums or the many drums that I'm not using here. So I end up with this view of the drums that I'm using, nicely color coded with the names of the drums there. As I say, I'll show you how to set up that part a little bit later on. And essentially, this is a great starting point for the composition stage yeah, of your project, yeah, where you're just writing the drum parts. However, I think it falls short when you come to the mixing stage. So that's what we're going to talk about in a moment. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you will. Addictive Drums 2 has been around for several years now, and yet many people, including me, still use it in their projects. Why? Because it's very, very good. If you haven't got hold of it yet, follow the link in the description down below. There's some great buying options there. Now, one of the great things about it is, is it's useful for beginners, but it's also got some really sort of advanced features as well, and it gives you great integration into Studio One. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first of all, let's see how I got hold of that drum map which I was using in the intro. So you can actually download and install the drum map which I was using in the intro from within Studio One itself. You just need to go over to the Browse panel. Now I have it open already. If you don't see your Browse panel, you can just press F5 on your keyboard and that toggles the Browse panel on and off. Then go over to the Cloud tab at the top, click on that, and then double click on Presonus Exchange. That's just going to log you into Presonus Exchange and then you can start searching it. So go to the search bar at the top and type in the word addict addictive and that's going to show you the addictive drums maps okay now the one i was using earlier um, had the little colored tabs on there which i like so if you want to get that one you would select it here addictive drums 2 with colored 
but you could use any of these other drum maps depending on your version so i think some of these are for an earlier version of addictive drums and i haven't tried all of them you may want to try them out some of them may be better maybe not give it a go but once you've selected the one you want just click on the install button at the bottom here okay and it's just going to take just a few seconds to download and install that they're very very small files you can close this transfers panel which you can see here and once you've done that if you go over to the left hand side here you will be able to see those drum maps available there for you to use it's as simple as that as i say this setup is great for the composition stage of your project as we saw if we go to the mix view here by clicking on mix at the bottom here all of our drum sounds were coming through that stereo channel there okay and that makes things nice and easy while you are composing takes the complexity out of things here now if you do want to mix these drums okay of course you can use the mixer which is built into addictive drums we can see that here we've got faders we've got mute we've got solo we've even got effects that we can use but there is however several reasons why this is not very useful for the final mixing stage first of all we don't have access to our drums from the console in, in as in terms of individual drums so we have to keep opening the plugin yeah so imagine you're doing your mix yeah you've got a whole bunch of tracks here with different things and you just want to tweak that snare drum level you're going to have to open up the plugin go to the mixer and adjust that snare drum level that can really sort of mess with your workflow and it's just not very very efficient that's one of the more minor reasons the next reason which i think is really important is the fact that you can't apply individual effects or your favorite effects plugins to individual drums yeah you've only got the choice of applying it to the whole drum kit if you insert effects down here in the channel or you know send this off to um, buses for effects okay so you don't have that ability now as we said there are effects which are included with addictive drums too if we go to the effects section here they're actually very very good for, for example i'll click on the snare here and you know it's got all the effects you would need for this type of drum and they are sort of tailored made for drums so there's good reasons to suggest that you could use the effects and you can continue to use them however you may also want to apply uh, particular plugins that you like okay so that's another reason why you'd want to get these drums out to separate channels in your mixer finally and for me one of the most important ones is is you can't do common techniques like side chain compression now you may or may not know what that is at the moment so i'll quickly explain side chain compression in terms of drums um, is something we'll often do with say for example the kick drum we'll often use the signal from the kick drum to suppress the bass guitar while the kick plays and so that we can hear it a bit more clearly you could uh, sort of make side chain compression work if you've got the whole signal coming through a stereo channel but honestly it's not worth the trouble it's much much easier to get your drums out to individual channels in your mix area in studio one and that's what we're going to learn how to do right now so let's start off by doing some setup here in studio one i want you to make sure that your console or mix view is open you can toggle that by pressing f3 on your keyboard like so and then over on the left hand side i just want you to make sure the instruments panel is showing if you can't see that you can turn it on by clicking on this little kind of piano icon here okay then i just want you to click on your addictive drums plugin like so that's going to expand it and you can see like magic all of the outputs we need are already here and they're correctly named as well all we have to do is enable them by clicking on the check boxes next to them i'll go through one at a time if there's a quicker way of doing this let me know in the comments down below so all of the outputs are now enabled and you can see them all over here in the console view excellent so now we're going to have that uh, ability to insert individual effects to grab faders and just make changes to do all kinds of nice things like side chaining etc however if we do play any of the drums here at the moment they're still coming through that stereo channel there so we need to rectify that we do that by going into addictive drums too and then at the bottom of each channel we can see this sort of down arrow i'm going to do it for the snare here okay so i'm going to click on that down arrow 
and we can see that there's five different options available. Currently, it's set to master, which is that master channel. I'm going to explain these five uh, different selections here a little bit later on, but for now, I just want you to select uh, separate out pre-fader. Okay, so we'll select that. You can see it's turned orange there. Now, if we actually play this snare drum now, have a look and have a listen to what's happening down here in the console view. This may be slightly confusing because we did select for it to go to just a separate out. However, as you will have seen there, it's also, or the sound is also coming through this master channel. Why is that? Well, that is because a lot of the sound of the snare here is actually being made by the overhead and room mics, etc. Okay, and that's what's going still through to the master bus. Just so I can demonstrate that, in Addictive Drums 2, let's just go ahead and mute the overheads, the room, the bus, and also let's just switch off the effects channels, okay? Now I'm going to play that snare again. Have a listen. Okay, that's how the snare sounds without the room involved, okay? Now you can see now as I play that it's just coming through that one channel in the console, yeah? Okay, so that is working as we wanted it to. And as I say, we can go ahead now and apply effects to that or mix it separately, okay? So I'm going to go ahead now and do that to all of these drums, including the overheads, which I will now unmute the room and the bus there. I'll switch my effects back on, okay? And I'm going to fast forward the video so you don't have to watch me do that because it's just going to take a few minutes. Okay, so I've done that for all of my drums. If I click on them, you will see that they're coming through their individual channels and coming through the overheads and room, etc., as well. Now, the only thing that's now coming through this master bus that we originally had was the effects. If I go ahead and just solo that channel there and play some drums, you'll hear that we're only hearing the effects. So if you did... Uh, use the whole drum kit like this and have everything going out to a separate channel you may just want to go down in studio one and re that, rename that to you know drum effects or whatever you want to rename it to but essentially we've achieved our goal so what do these five different options mean when we select the outputs from addictive drums too so in order to explore these four output options we're going to focus on just one drum the snare drum okay and i'm going to solo that drum by going down to the console view here in studio one and just clicking on s for solo okay so now when i play the snare drum that's the only thing that we can hear now if you remember we had selected the output here to be separate out pre-fader and most of you have probably already guessed what that means if i adjust the fader here in addictive drums i'll turn it all the way down to the bottom here and play the snare drum it's still at the same volume it's not being affected by the fader because the sound of the snare is going out to studio one before it hits the fader so it's pre-fader so in this mode the fader makes no difference whatsoever now if we go to the next selection separate out pre-fader plus master all that means is it's doing the same thing but it's also splitting that signal out to the master output now Previously, we had renamed that, okay, because the only thing that was coming out of our master output earlier was the effects. So we did rename it down here to drum effects, but it's still basically our master output. So now if I solo that channel as well and play the snare, you can hear that it's coming out of both those channels and we can hear the effects in there as well, okay? So it's just a way of splitting that signal. Now, the next option down, you may have guessed, separate out post fader does mean that the signal will be affected by the fader. I'm going to unsolo that master output for a moment, play the snare, turn it, turn the fader down here in Addictive Drums 2, and you can hear it's got quieter. So that is one option available to you. I'm not exactly sure why you would use that. I've never used it, I don't think. If you've got a use for that, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really intrigued as to why they would have put this option there. 
Now, the next option is pretty sort of self-explanatory. It's the same again, but of course, it's also going to go out to the master bus. Importantly, it's still not going to be affected. Uh, sorry, it still is going to be affected by this fader. Now, one thing I want to point out, which is pretty important, is once you're using this mode, you can no longer use the panning from within addictive drums. Whatever choice you've made here, apart from the master bus, all of these four choices sort of eliminate panning um, from the equation um, when you're routed out to Studio One. So you will need to make sure with any panning that you want to do now, that you do control that down here in the console view in Studio One. So as I said earlier, now we've routed these drums out to individual channels. We can now process them separately. We can insert effects in here. We can send them out to buses. We can do all sorts of wonderful things. We can automate them, of course, all that kind of thing. But I want you to be aware of one thing in terms of effects. Here in Addictive Drums, there are some effects built in, okay? So if we click on the snare button here, for example, we can see that uh, apart from being able to change the sound of the snare in many, many ways, there is a compressor switched on there, there's some EQ, there's some tape saturation, etc. there, okay? So there's already some effects applied. And those effects, regardless of our output settings, are still going through to Studio One, okay? So we're not bypassing the effects section in Addictive Drums 2. Now, I happen to think that these are very, very good and very, very useful, but you may want to use some different ones. You may want to start from scratch and really tailor the sound of your drums using the effects that you want, okay? So do be aware of that when you use this setup. Now, at the beginning of this video, I dragged a pre-made beat into Studio One. However, in my humble opinion, I reckon you're much better off to program your own drum beats so that they're tailor-made for your piece of music. If you don't know where to start with that, I already made a video taking you through the first steps of making beats in Studio One.